Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? It is me, your boy, TPT, coming at you, not live and not from Twitch TV. Hope you all are having a fantastic day today. So, today's video is going to be on multiplayer idea groups. Now, before we do get into it, though, obviously, I do have to give a couple shout outs. First of all, once again, got to shout out my boy Lunatic for giving me the save file. He is a great streamer, um, streams plenty of games, E4, TF2, Planet Side, doesn't matter, he'll do it. Great guy, check him out, link in the description down below. Also, I have a new shout out today, which is the EU4 Australia Discord, right? This is also another great place to hang out, you know, I know that uh, it can be quite difficult finding fellow Australians who play this game as well. As an Australian myself, I feel like I am allowed to say that. But it is an entire Discord dedicated to Australians playing EU4 so that you always can run that three speed without no Yankee plebs telling you otherwise. <laughs> anyway, guys, again, link in the description and obviously link in the description to the EU4 Casuals Discord as per usual. So now let us get into it. So, so, so. If you don't know, Taking uh, taking ideas in single player can be pretty difficult. Uh, sorry, pretty different from taking them in multiplayer, because obviously there is definitely a particular meta which is prevalent in multiplayer, and also there's a lot of things that play differently compared to multiplayer. So I propose that we just jump right into it now. Again. I am going to be doing it in order. I've already got my notes down, so I'm doing it in the order that it shows up on the screen. Obviously, because we already have taken some ideas in the save file. Won't all show up here, but that is okay, because your boy is ready and prepared. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be yet again another subjective video. I understand that not everyone plays the exact same. Some people will rate ideas higher than other. This is just my and several of my friends' relatively agreed opinion on the quality of ideas in multiplayer so if you don't entirely agree with me feel free to let me know actually uh in the comments down below if you think that ideas you know may have a different prevalence from what i've given them or they may be you know less or more useful feel free to let me know and i will gladly have a discussion with you about why i said what i said about them anyway beginning it off obviously we've got innovative ideas once again also, just before we do jump into this real quick, actually, um, I'm not really going to, I'm going to try not to cover too much that I covered in the single player ideas in the multiplayer ideas. Uh, I'm mostly just going to give an overall perspective. So this video isn't 45 minutes long again, <laughs> because I don't want to, I also want to rehash over content. You know, I want to keep everything relatively unique. I don't want to, you know, go retread old ground that I've already treaded on before. So innovative ideas. I would say that they're pretty good in multiplayer, again, particularly if you're playing around Europe. You know, if you're playing in Italy, they're pretty much a must. If you're playing in England, not a bad idea. Somewhere in Germany, you know, anywhere in Europe, they're always pretty solid. As well as, you know, if you're playing something like Korea, they're really nice. Um, but they are still definitely a sometimes idea group. It does really depend on who you're playing as. You can actually take them as Ethiopia if you want, because of the fact that you start, obviously start with your 656. I personally don't tend to because I tend to use those points for expanding early on. Whereas if you're someone like Italy, you know, you're not really spending as much on coring and stuff as compared to if you're somewhere like Ethiopia. So I would say that definitely are sometimes, um, particularly with the, with the, you know, 50% nerf on the quality innovative ideas, they're, they're really not as high a priority as they used to be, but they're definitely still a solid idea group to pick up. And I would suggest considering it. Next up on the list is religious ideas. So, I still think religious ideas are okay. They're not the worst pick. However, they're, they're definitely a lot lower priority in multiplayer than in single player. Because of the fact that when you're playing multiplayer, you pretty much always want to have four military ideas. And so, you normally tend to only take two admin, two diplo ideas. And one of those admin ideas is always going to be economic. And, you know, you, you're normally going to take maybe innovative 
or you know humanist as your other one so don't tend to have them too high but they can still definitely be useful particularly you know as long as you fit the same same you know ideas as the single player you know if you're orthodox if you're coptic you know somewhere somewhere where there's a lot of heathens and heretics around you then it's not a terrible idea so econ ideas Econ ideas is mandatory. You should be taking economic ideas every single multiplayer game that you play. Doesn't matter if it's competitive, doesn't matter if it's casual, always take econ ideas. Because two reasons. One, really good for making money. Two, 5% discipline with quality, pretty much mandatory policy. You can't, you have to max out discipline, honestly. You don't really get a choice in that. <laughs> and third, they're, they're, the, the econ ideas are better suited for a bit of a taller playstyle. They, they work well with taller playstyles, and when you're in multiplayer, you're not going to be expanding and blobbing as hard as you are in single player normally. And so, when you do, you know, get get those those nice perks, you know, when when you do go to dev and that, because again, you won't be expanding as hard, so you will probably have more points left over then obviously economic ideas is definitely going to be your man. So I would always suggest taking these and I don't really think there's any reason not to take ide economic ideas as your first admin pick. And I don't think there's any reason to take any admin idea over economic ideas. So I would always suggest getting them pretty much. Long story short, always get them, always, 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 and get them as your first admin idea as well. Next is expansion. So, expansion is definitely better than exploration ideas in multiplayer because of the fact that you only need to spend 400 admin points to get the first colonist. That is the most important part about it. So, what you can do, say you're playing Mali, you know, and obviously all of this starts uncolonized, right? All that starts uncolonized. So, what if you just spent 400 points of admin and you just got to colonize this, then you could drop the policy and take, uh, you know, maybe economic if you have one already, or some other policy instead. It's definitely pretty nice. You know, it's for the first idea, but if you're not, you know, if I would not suggest taking it if you aren't, you know, one of the colonizers or only buying the first idea in it and dropping it afterwards. You know, so if you, you know, if you want to grab these provinces, this one, or all these ones along here, and then just drop it afterwards, because it's not that great otherwise. You know, it's just not that good. Next one is admin. Don't. Don't take admin. Enough said. Never take it in multiplayer. Do not bother. The only reason you really tend to take admin is the creole creation cost. And because, again, because you're not expanding as much in multiplayer, you don't need it. You just don't need it. So never take it. Humanist. Okay. Now, as you guys know, I am definitely biased towards humanist. I pretty much take it pretty often. Now, I do definitely take it less in multiplayer because once again, it's good for blobbing and you don't need to blob as hard in multiplayer. However, you know, if I'm playing in somewhere like India, I will definitely consider picking it up. Because it's just super nice. It's it is a, it's it is still a super nice idea group. It's just that it's nowhere near as high a priority in sing, as in multiplayer as it is in single player. So it is it is good as like your second admin idea. You know, it's it's decent as a second admin idea because you you do really need two and you got economic and then you if you don't have innovative you've got yourself your you know you got your humanist because. You know, you're not, you're not really going to take innovative in India because you're probably spending all that that, that admin on coring because India is, is a good place to blow about at multiplayer. You can still definitely blow about in multiplayer in India, just not nowhere near as hard, obviously, because you'll eventually get, like, cocked by a... cockboxed by, like, an Aitaya or a Moogles, you know, on either side of you. So, however, you want to conquer this as quickly as possible. So... It's not, as, again, it's not as high a priority, but it is still definitely a nice idea group. Now, next idea group is espionage. So, ironically enough, espionage is actually better in multiplayer than it is in single player. In fact, it's probably not ironic. It actually makes a lot of sense. 
However, there's a particular reason why it's good. And the simple reason is because it lets you meme. So if you guys don't know about espionage, it has a particular part in it for rebel support efficiency. So if you have a look down there, you'll see it twice, I believe. You have the 50% rebel support efficiency from economic ideas, and you've got the 25% rebel support efficiency from humanist ideas. And let me just tell you, along with the 50% from the, uh, the, like the, the completed espionage. And if you play something like Palatinate, you also get an additional 20% in your national ideas. So what that means is every single time a human player tries to expand, they get rebels. Just, they get rebels. They can't do anything about it. So it's really, really fun if you want to piss people off. You know, if you want, if your sole goal in the multiplayer game is peeing people off, I cannot recommend any idea group more than espionage. It is just the best way to just completely F with someone. It's really funny and quite enjoyable, let me just say. <laughs> Give it a shot if you haven't. Next idea we have is diplomatic, which if you are wondering, was the uh, that was the full dip the idea slot that was here. It's just that I can't open this menu up if I don't have a free slot available, so I had to get rid of it. Now, diplomatic, are you playing Austria? Yes or no? Well, if you're not playing Austria, I wouldn't even suggest bothering this idea group because in multiplayer, the better idea group for a nation which is focusing on diplomacy and also on vassals because you don't really tend to worry about diplomacy as much in multiplayer, because most of the time, like, by halfway through, the only people you're going to be talking to are, you know, they're other players. So, you know, the diplomats, you know, it's meh. The war score cost is nice, I will admit, as is that, and the diplomatic relations. However, a lot of servers already artificially, you know, s s say how many allies you can have. So, diplomatic relations also isn't as good in multiplayer. However, it can obviously still be used for vassals. But... Normally, if you want to go for vassals, influence is better because of the income, the liberty desire, the annexation cost, the diplomatic reputation, the force limit contribution, and just all that jazz. You know, if you aren't take, if you are going to take a diplomatic idea focused around vassals and that, if you're not Austria in particular, just go influence. There's no point taking diplo if you're not Austria. There's no point. So, exploration ideas. All right, I would actually say that exploration ideas is one of the lower, like the much lower priority idea groups in the game for multiplayer. Be However, if you if, if you are planning on fighting anybody during the game, right, like particularly early on, if you're planning on fighting anybody during the game, don't take exploration ideas. It's a waste of a slot if you're trying to play them. If you're playing Portugal, yeah, fair enough. If you're playing England and you're playing Ireland England, yeah, fair enough. However, if you expect to get into any conflict with any other players, don't take exploration ideas. It will just be to your detriment and it won't be worth it. So keep that in mind. Exploration ideas depends on where you are situated and where everybody else is situated as well. Now, maritime ideas. Maritime ideas, again, is still not a horrible idea group in multiplayer particularly however it is definitely still very subjective uh, you know you've got to be playing great britain malacca japan you know those, or even like possibly a uh you know like a colonial nation otherwise it's just once again it's just not worth it it only really increases your fleet it doesn't give your armies anything and when you are playing in multiplayer your armies are basically everything you know, you got first priority armies, second priority money. Armies is first above everything. So if you're not playing one of those three countries, again, it's got to be Island GB and probably Island Japan as well. If you're not playing those, wouldn't suggest taking it. Now, influence, we did briefly cover, but if, you know, just to go over it again, Vassal meta is the meta in multiplayer. So, influence is one of the better Diplo ideas to take. You know, especially, if you're not going to take Maritime, really. Exploration is meh. Espionage is meme. Diplomatic is, you know, like one of the only uh, proper options. And then you've got the trade is the last one. And speaking of trade, 
always take trade. Trade is yes. Tr you need at least one diplomatic, po you know, one diplomatic idea group, and trade will always at least be that one. Again, you can always, you know, you can take maybe influence and maritime or something, but your first priority for a diplo idea will always be trade. This idea is just so good; it gives you a lot of money, which again is the second priority. Keep that in mind. You know, and it, it can really fuel your economy. It can it can stop your country from collapsing after a bad war because of the pure amount of money that it gives you. And it's generally just a pretty decent idea group. And again, the reason it's decent is because it's a diplo idea group and you do need a diplo idea group. And it gives a crap ton of money, which is the second priority. Now onto the mill ideas. We've got aristocratic and plutocratic. Don't bother. Just don't touch them. Don't bother. They're not worth it. Like, you know, aristocratic is subjectively worth it in single player. Just don't bother. Do not bother with aristocratic and plutocratic ideas. It is a waste of a mill slot. Enough said. Okay, offensive ideas. Uh, let's see if we can take one. Yep, there it is. So, offensive ideas is a good, I would say, later to late game idea slot. So, around, don't take it any earlier than 4th to 6th. Like, don't take it any earlier than around here to here. Otherwise, it's it's going to have a limited effectiveness. It's definitely more of a later game idea group because of its focus on generals and discipline. You'd be better taking something like quality or, or specifically quantity, maybe defensive ideas. So, unless you're Ottomans or France and you're just steamrolling people, don't bother taking offensive ideas before the 4th to 6th slot at the earliest. I would suggest around 5, you know? Because you'll have your, you've got your quantity, and then you got your quality, and then you, you know, or actually it'll be quantity and then quality, or quantity and quality, and then you've got your third idea slot afterwards, which you can obviously drop it in then. Next one is defensive. So, defensive ideas. I will openly admit, again, I've already, I've, I have made it very clear about my dislike towards defensive ideas, but even in multiplayer, I have to like give it to defensive ideas. If you are planning on getting in an early player war with someone, particularly if it's like a death war or something, take defensive ideas straight up. Morale is king in the early game. I think I've already said this, but morale is king. And defensive ideas is the best and easiest 15% morale you can get in the game. So if you're planning on getting an early player war, or alternatively, if you're going for like Fortress Persia or Fortress Switzerland or just Fortress Meta, take defensive ideas it covers all of your bases you know it's also really irritating people if you if i see someone with defensive ideas i will actually hesitate before i want to attack them because i just don't want to have to deal with it it's just such an it's a, it's it's basically espionage in the way that it's really good at peeing people off but it's also actually useful outside of just being annoying <laughs> so it's definitely not a bad idea group in you know in uh, pvp and multiplayer specifically early game if it's early game and you know you're gonna be getting into a war get it pick it up it's nothing that you like you can't pick up a better idea group earlier on now the next one is quality obviously quality is a mandatory idea group in multiplayer it's best in the mid game i would say around again like your your third to fourth idea slot don't take it any later all right you need to grab it early on. It is, don't take too long to pick up quality. You can't underestimate how useful it is. You know, it gives you, if, you, if you've already picked up economic ideas, that's 10% discipline, you know, 10% ICA, 10% cavalry combat ability, artillery combat ability, you know, army tradition. And if you pick it up here, you've already started getting cannons. So this also starts to become relevant. You know, this is around what, idea 14. So just after this one is when cannons become like meta. If you look, it should be, yeah, at 14. So cannons become meta at around tech 16. That's when you start just wanting to completely fill out your backline regardless of how much money you make. And so you want to pick it up a bit early so that way you've got it finished by that point. You want to have it finished by tech 16, well before tech 16, ideally. Again, even for the discipline, 10% discipline, can't go wrong. So always take it and preferably in your second to, sorry, in your third to fourth idea slot. Don't take too long to pick it up. I can't stress that enough. Quantity ideas. Another mandatory idea group. The earlier, the better. Take it first, take it second. Don't wait to get it. Take it ASAP. It is 
it, it is really good especially with the meta you know again like it combines with good ones you know like you got the 20 percent goods produced from trailer tiers which if you recall me saying briefly is one of the best if not the best economic policy in the game and it gives you just a metric butt ton of troops it means you can fight wars for longer it means you can fight wars better because force limit is very very important in multiplayer wars you want to be maxing out your force limit and the person with the higher force limit is always going to be coming off pretty well you know plus you've also got the recovery makes your troops cheaper as well makes your garrison size larger which makes it annoying to kill people and it decreases your attrition which is actually not very useful in single player, but very useful in multiplayer because, you know, when you've got like 500k stacks sitting on a 20, 20 supply limit province, that 10% attrition will come in handy, seriously. And it can save you hundreds of thousands of troops. Like, unironically, it can save you hundreds of thousands of troops in the long run. So always, con always consider, you know, the different meta in multiplayer and compare it to what the ideas give and multi and in multiplayer quantity is a must i can't stress an enough how mandatory quantity is you know it is probably the single best multiplayer idea in the game it is a mandatory first or second idea group basically every single time and last but not least we have naval so Naval is actually subjectively useful in multiplayer. However, okay, you got to ask yourself one very simple question. Do I have land outside of my home island? Is your answer yes or no? If you're playing a full island Great Britain, you can pick up you can pick up naval ideas. Right? I, I would not tend to suggest it. I would prefer to go for maritime, but you can pick up naval ideas because if you pick up naval ideas as a Great Britain, no one is touching you for the rest of the game. You know, if you are just on your island and you pick up naval ideas, no one is touching you for the rest of the game. You've got, you know, you've got the 20% heavy ship combat ability. You've got better naval and shock, uh, sorry, naval fire and shock. You've got less morale damage, more ship durability. You've got sailors, you know, naval attrition, uh, morale navies, and one very important thing, global naval engagement, because if you guys don't know, global naval engagement is set at base of 30 for the entire game. You can't increase it outside of modifiers. So that's actually a really, really, really OP idea for naval. Um, but yeah, so if you are on a naval ideas, I actually would recommend taking... So if you're on a naval nation where you are only on your island, you know, or maybe obviously you maybe have some colonies over here, that's okay. Take it because no one will lay a finger on you for the rest of the game. And there's nothing they can do about you being a pain in the butt. So I would always consider it. I would, I would, I would think a long time before I consider it, but I would always consider it. Again, Japan is quite similar. If you're like Japan, you have like your island and hell, if you want to like grab this land as well, it's, you know, it works perfectly fine. It's all, it's all got straights and stuff. So it's not horrible. You know, just pick up all this land as well. It gives you quite a bit of territory and pick up naval ideas. Again, no one's touching you. They can't. A person with naval ideas will pretty much always beat someone without naval ideas. If you have naval ideas, you will win against someone without them. They they are pretty much the deciding factor in who wins naval combat. Do you have naval ideas? Yes, you win. If they don't, then you lose. Or obviously if neither of you have it, then it's a little more subjective than that. But it is probably one of the most OP ideas uh OP subjective military ideas in the game. Specifically for naval, although obviously you got to remember that uh, you know E four isn't too heavily focused on naval combat, so it, it's not like your you know your armies will be thin paper, but there's no way in hell they're crossing the Straits of Dover, you know. And you know if you just want to play a tall Britain game, then that's perfectly okay. You can do that, and again, they won't be able to touch you. So take that into consideration. Anyway, guys, I think we've pretty much covered everything I want to cover. 
you know, I, I did want to make this a bit of a shorter one because I didn't want to rehash over stuff that I've already said in my single player ideas, which if you want, I will also put a link to in the description down below. If you want my more in-depth thoughts on a lot of the idea groups as quite a bit of it does overlap here. And if it doesn't, I'll probably normally specify that it is specifically for the single player, you know, and for the cases of multiplayer, everything I've said in this video overrides my thoughts on the ideas in the single player one. Though they, are t they tend to be a bit more general. So anyway, guys, hope you have enjoyed. Um, be sure to check out my Twitch channel, my Discord server in the link in the description down below. Great places to hang out. We've actually had a lot of people come into the Discord server. A lot of people coming into the Twitch stream recently. Feels really good to have some nice growth. Be able to spread my knowledge with other people as well, because I love you know being able to help other people enjoy this game just as much as I do. Because I love E4. I've put you know almost almost around 2,500 hours into it. It is one of my most played games on Steam. In fact, if you exclude BDO, it is my most played game on Steam. And I will always happily spread my knowledge of this game to other people. And I will happily learn more about this game from other people as well. So, you know, if you disagree with anything I've said, comment in the comments down below. Let me know. I would love to have a discussion about it. And also, if you want to learn more, check out the Discord, check out the Twitch. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them at either of those two or in the comments. Uh, even if I'm not streaming EU4, I will still gladly answer any questions you may have. So until then, guys, I will see you next video. Peace.